hate to have to do this, but let me read some of that brilliant state senator that represents uh, Santa Fe, Texas. What he thinks is the problem. Engagement, not protest, will prevent school violence. Oh, here we go. On Friday, our Texas community became the latest in a list all too long of places left to sort through the profound sorrow and underlying grief left in the wake of a school shooting. Our neighbors lost children and family. This is a road our country has walked down too many times, and in the face of reckless hatred and unspeakable evil, we blame, we plan, and we pray that the most vulnerable among us will never know this fear. With this crushing reality, we are left with the hollow frustration we could have and should have done better for our kids and for each other. So far, it sounds lovely, but here we go. We found ourselves here just last February confronted with the reality that through all our debate and partisan politics, our children were not safe. In the aftermath of Parkland, Florida, sides were picked and people moved further apart. Walkouts were staged, seemingly in demand of government action on gun control. What is lost in that rhetoric, that rhetoric, is that divide is what brought us to that point. We just don't understand each other. Oh, that's the problem, right? That's the problem. We just don't understand each other. I just need to better understand the mind of somebody who packs up a bunch of uh, guns, usually wears, you know, uh, stuff to conceal themselves, and then goes shoot up random people in school. Well, in some cases, people that they don't like. It's reported that the shooter uh, was turned down. He had made, uh, you know, romantic overtures to one of the students, and he was turned down, and that's part of why he did what he did. But we just need to better understand those people, is what he's saying. Through the use of social media, a retired Texas educator proposed that instead of walking out, we should be walking up, engaging. Perhaps we shouldn't be turning our backs and marginalizing each other. Perhaps, perhaps we should be approaching each other and disregarding social stigmas and the ostracizing that sows resentment and bleeds alienation. Far too often, we abandon those who come from a different background, have a different understanding, or act in a different way. I implore students and adults alike, don't give up. Don't walk out, engage, eat lunch with the quiet kid. Realize that your neighbors on the opposite side of the argument also want what is best for children and allow honest discussion and earnest commitment to community and fellowship to speak to the disaffection that festers to hate. I can't read any more of that bullshit because it's bullshit. And it's insulting my intelligence. It's insulting your intelligence and it's insulting the, the legacy and the memory of the students in Parkland that have been massacred, the students that were just massacred in Santa Fe, Texas. This is not a problem of we all just don't understand each other. This is not a let's, let's sing Kumbaya, everything will be better. This is not we really need to take care of how many entrances and eg exits we have at schools. There's just too many entrances and exits, as the Lieutenant Governor said. Here, here's what's happening everywhere in the country. Schools, concert, movie theaters, uh, malls. People are picking up guns and massacring people. Unfortunately, and I say this to everybody, as somebody who suffers from depression, I take antidepressants. I have no shame in saying that. You're never going to eradicate all mental health problems. We could make improvements. We should add a lot more to the federal budget for mental health, for because uh, mental health is just as important as physical health. And any research from uh, scientists, medical uh, me medical experts will tell you, mental and physical health they go hand in hand. When one is off, the other soon follows. So, of course, mental health is important, but you're never going to eradicate mental health issues. You're not going to solve or help every single deranged 16 or 17 year old or older. You're just not going to. People are going to fall through the cracks, especially in a country that has more guns in distribution than people. Eli says, I smoke pot for anxiety. It's legal in California. Yo, LOL. Yo, LOL. Um, I take baths and listen to Third Eye Blind and Coldplay for, Coldplay for anxiety, but that's just me. So... All these idiots, like this state senator and Ted Cruz with the thoughts and prayers and we just need to hold hands and understand each other better. No, that's not the problem. Honestly, we do understand each other. That's what's really going on. We understand 
that the politicians, whether it's a state senator, a uh, 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 senator on the federal level, or the president, they don't value human life. They don't care. Lives are under staying in power. That's what we understand. That is the truth. And because CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Associated Press and BuzzFeed and Mike and all these, you know, supposedly progressive outlets and frankly, independent media stops covering these shootings a few days after. Let's be real. I love many of the independent media, but how many of the independent journalists out there, the commentators are still covering the Santa Fe High School shooting? I'm not saying that to like give myself a pat on the back. I'm saying it because how this continues to happen and how this continues to get no, uh, how it continues to be normalized is when we stop paying attention to it, when we stop saying this is not normal, when we stop calling out the politicians that are responsible. And I, I rarely would do this, but Michael Bloomberg is right. Bloomberg's gun control group blames Texas governor for school shooting. Let me read you this. Every Town for Gun Safety, the advocacy group founded by former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, ran a full-paid ad in the Houston ad in the Houston Chronicle Tuesday, blaming Texas Governor Greg Abbott's inaction on gun, gun control for the shooting at a Texas high school Friday. The ad, which features a letter signed by 40 Texas high school students, comes just days after 17-year-old Dimitri Pagortis, apologies if I'm mispronouncing, killed 10 and injured 13 at Santa Fe High School outside Houston using a legally owned shotgun and a .38 revolver he stole from his father. Quote, our job is to be good students. Your job is to keep us safe. You have failed at your job, the students wrote in a letter to Abbott. Like so many politicians cozy with the NRA, you have steadfastly opposed any reasonable measures that might protect us from gun violence. Instead, you've signed dangerous policies to force public colleges in Texas to allow guns on campus and make it legal to openly carry firearms in public. Quote, you've continued to push the notion that guns everywhere for everyone make us safer. The letter continues. By that logic, shouldn't we be among the safest states in the nation? Abbott announced after the school shooting that he would host a series of roundtable discussions on school safety. Give me a fuck... Not allowed to curse on YouTube, forgot. Give me a flippin' break. Quote, do you think that the children who were shot in class this week died because they hadn't prayed enough? What about the 26 who were killed while they were worshiping in Sutherland Springs? Do you think they are to blame rather than yourself and other politicians who refuse to allow even a meaningful discourse on reasonable gun violence pr uh, prevention policies? The students wrote in the letter that was sent to Abbott. I mean, I did a video uh, the other day, you can check it out right here on the channel, uh, where I exposed the fact that Governor Greg Abbott, his, his career in politics began because the NRA had a front group, a, a law enforcement front, front group that the NRA funded that helped get Greg Abbott elected as attorney general. And what do you know, then Greg Abbott starts getting a lot of money from the NRA, the NRA runs ads for him in his run for governor. And what do you know? He pushes any, any law or any bill sent to him to open up gun, uh, gun distribution, any law to make it easier for guns to come into play. Greg Abbott signed. But now he's running for re-election this year. So all of a sudden he wants to have roundtables. Well, what do you know? Before, before this school shooting, Greg Abbott who now is having roundtables, was about to give away a shotgun as a giveaway for his campaign. You know, most campaigns give away like a bumper sticker, I don't know, uh, you know, cool swag like shirts, maybe a lunch with the candidate. Greg Abbott was going to give away a shotgun because, hey, thank thankfully when eight children were shot and two teachers, let's not forget the teachers, um, they changed course. Very kind of you, Mr. Abbott. There will be a press conference on Friday, um, March for Our Lives, you know, the large march that happened in Washington, D.C., uh, which was launched and spearheaded by the students from Parkland, Florida. Now they have, they're expanding and having chapters in other states. 
So March for Our Lives, I believe the Texas chapter will be having a press conference on Friday with Santa Fe high school students. So I'm sure it will get some corporate media attention, but I, I've kept on CNN and MSNBC most of the day because I love to torture myself. And I also, I watch it so you don't have to. 